Cochin was founded in 1993 by a British epidemiologist, and the goal has been since the beginning to summarize the best available evidence on effectiveness of intervention. So when we started, and for many, many years, we relied very much on randomized control trials. But as time went by, we had to adapt and to, create, to, to generate a systematic reviews from other type of studies. So we start publishing diagnostic test accuracy reviews in 2008. We start publishing network meta-analysis when you pull together a series of interventions in 2010, qualitative reviews, uh, prognosis reviews, and most recently as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, we put our efforts to publish what we are calling Cochrane Rapid Review. So that's reviews that are conducting a very short period of time. But before we say, uh, talk about Cochrane, what's exactly a systematic review? We always in, 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 in uh, healthcare disciplines have used reviews as a way to keep ourselves up to date with the amount of information that is available. Uh, the difference between what we call the narrative review and a systematic review is that the systematic review has a process. So it's a summary of the, the, the research evidence on, on a certain topic, but it starts with a predefined question uh, and a protocol that will set exactly the process and, and every single step of conducting that research. So once we started the process, we looked at, a, at most of the evidence of the, of the research in a certain topic, but we do a critical appraisal of all the included studies and also a critical appraisal of the excluded studies, the reasons why they have been excluded. When it's possible, we do a statistic analysis, but it's not mandatory. If there is a lot of heterogeneity of the studies that are not really applicable, it's not uh, to, to be pulled, we then provide the information without pulling and doing a statistic analysis. We have to make sure when we do a statistic analysis that we also present a measure of how confident we are on that results, and we, we, we clarify the uncertainties. So in Cochrane, uh, we produced these reviews, as I said, since the beginning, since 1993. Uh, and, but we also produce, we have a number of methodologies that create guidance and standards. And this is very, very important for Cochrane. And that's one of the reasons why Cochrane reviews are considered of very high standards, because we have a proper process, we have guidance, and we train our authors or we provide support to the authors when they are conducting methodological support. Cochrane has eight thematic networks. These involve 53 what we call Cochrane review groups, and each group are responsible for certain areas. So for example, you have a network on mental health, and within this network, you have a group that will be dealing with drugs and addiction, another one with schizophrenia, another one with dementia, another one of depression, and they've been pulled together in a network of mental health groups. Uh, for every review, we first published a protocol, as I described before. And, the, and every time that new evidence, and this is very important for the crisis that we are uh, facing right now, uh, can, can, becomes available, these reviews are then updated. So we are also very, very strict with our conflict of interest policy. And the reason for that is that we would like, Cochrane is an independent organization, and we strive for transparency on the process and how we do things. So basically, uh, there has been a number of research comparing Cochrane systematic reviews with other systematic reviews published in other journals. And in most of this research, Cochrane is considered of higher quality for, for a variety of reasons, because we publish a protocol for every single review, because we conduct a clear uh, assessment of all the studies, including the studies that are included in the review, but the ones that are uh, 
published and they also we attempt to identify the ones that are unpublished. We don't limit to a certain language. It's very common that, uh, that systematic reviews would limit to one or two languages. We don't have this limit. Uh, we have a, a, a set of outcome, outcomes that we consider primary. For example, if we're saying that uh, this drug could uh, increase mortality, this would be a primary outcome, and we define it very clear why it's the prime uh, uh, outcome. As much as possible, we try to consider balance between harms and benefits, uh, and we do a risk of bias or a possibility of the, that result, the certainty of that result in each one of the studies and in the pool of the study for all our reviews. Uh, so this uh, uh, it's, it's also possible because Cochem is really a, a very international organization with centers all over the world. And as a result of the systematic reviews, we published the Cochem Library. The Cochrane Library is an online journal that is published by Wiley uh, and is available uh, worldwide. So we have, uh, for, for, for part of the population in countries in, 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 low, in, in low income countries, the Cochrane Library is available for free. For part of the countries, it's, it's, it's available as national license. So they, the whole country purchase it, and so the people inside the country can use it without any extra payment. And, and that's the model that we've attempted to increase over the past of the years. And we have obviously subscription to the library.